Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconan, along with Brianna Valeski, and I have John Borman on the line. He's a certified market technician and founder of Alpha Culture Capture. How you doing this morning, John? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, Brianna just informed me that uh, you have a new product on, on MarketFi. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Well, that, well, that's what the Alpha Capture uh, business is. I actually have two businesses. I, I run an RIA, which is Broadsword Capital, and I have Alpha Capture, which was a, uh, an extension of the blog I started two years ago, and uh, that's now on MarketFi with a subscription service, and it's really just trend-following stocks, and as I like to, I simply describe it on there that I buy stocks in uptrends and I manage risk. That's really what it's all about. Just boil it down to something that simple. Do you uh, do you sell stocks in downtrends? I I don't uh, short. It's long only trend following. Um, I've I've found that I can't. I haven't been able to come up with a system that can can consistently make money shorting stocks. And um, it is possible to do it with one or two positions here and there, but I, I prefer to do it as um, long-only trend following. And if it means we get a uh, long downturn or bear market, then we'd simply be mostly in cash. That's, that's kind of how I manage money for clients, and I try to do an extension of that. Uh, on the subscriber service, but there are always opportunities because you just find yourself coming up with um, things over shorter time frames so that rather than um, entries that might come from all-time highs or 52-week highs, you might find yourself then taking uh, positions that come from 50-day highs. You know, you, you're, you're still using the same methodology, but it's just over slightly different time frame. Uh, do you find that when you're, you know, applying your process to the market and you're looking for, you know, at the entire universe, a universe of stocks to purchase, do you find at times when it gets really low and you're just having a hard time, do you find that coinciding with, you know, shorter long-term peaks in the market? You, you do, but I, I would, uh, on a relative basis, yes, but there's always something. It just depends how big a universe you want to use. I mean, I try to stick mostly to S&P 500 names, uh -huh. but I do I do like to look at some of the uh, high growth um, IBD canceling type names as well, which I think is a great screen. But, you know, I, I already know if it's in that list, it's got great fundamentals. I just then want to make sure it's also got the technicals that I like to see. Um, so I, I do sometimes use those as well. Okay, so let's talk about your process and how you go about, you know, choosing stocks to an invest in. Uh, do you start, you know, from the top down? Do you start with, like, the fundamentals of a company? And if you like the fundamentals, you go into the technicals? Or, or talk about how you get started uh, analyzing a stock. It's it's all price based, so it, it's it's technical. Um, the only way I will bring fundamentals into it is in the way I said earlier with um, something like um, IBD, where I then already know it's got great fundamentals, and, and I'm I'm not an expert in that area, so I don't need to go into any other detail about it. I do have um, I, I do like to sometimes look at different themes of. Um, Companies, you know, growth areas, um, say something like uh, Res ResMed might be a good example, um, or, or wearables, any other kind of new technology, or right now cybersecurity, things like that, where there's an emerging tr trend. But it's the the mechanics of the trade entering and exit are always going to be technical. Okay, so that's yeah. the you know that's the thing that's, that drives. Uh, the real uh, process in terms of managing risk. The fundamentals 
know, won't change. You know, if the price is going to move first, the fundamentals, you won't know something's changed until you see the next quarterly report or something like that. Okay. All right. We'll go into, uh, you know, some of the uh, uh, specific setups in a minute here. But let's just talk a little bit more about, you know, the technicals uh, that, that you look at. Are you are you really looking long term on, on these, the monthlies, the weeklies, or do you try and, you know, focus more on dailies and some intraday charts? What, what time frames are you looking at uh, for your trades? Um, it's the, the, the time frame for the trades can be weeks to months. So when I'm looking at charts, I'm looking primarily at daily charts, and I might look at daily charts over uh, three, three and six months and one year, and I'll use moving averages um, like the 20 EMA and uh, a 50 and 200 symbol. Uh, but I'll also look at a weekly chart, and there I'd look at a, um, mm. I'd put that on a two-year and I'd uh, mm. put over it a 10 and 40 moving average. So I try to really get a big picture, and, and you like to have it in an uptrend over multiple time frames. So one of my favorite setups is something that's already in a long-term uptrend and may have been consolidating for a few weeks or even months and is now looking like it, it's setting up to break out again so you're getting you're getting a resumption of a long term trend. You're getting it on a short, medium, and long term uptrend. I, you know that's a ideal scenario. I like to have the uh, 20, 50, and 200 day moving averages. Um, I, I like to say I like them stacked and rising. That means I I want the 20 above the 50, the 50 above the 200, and uh, to have them all rising. It's you know this is the kind of situation where you're trying to get everything lined up. You you won't always find the perfect setup, but in a in a really good market, you can afford to be fussy and picky mm -hmm. about what entries you take and demand a bit more from the trade from the trend uh, before you take the trade. Okay. Do you have any um, any particular issues that are meeting that scenario? That's a pretty uh... You know, pretty. Uh, I won't say complicated, but you got a lot of factors there that you're looking for to complete a trade. Is there anything on your radar for today? Uh, well, yeah. There's. I mean, there's a few things setting up at the moment um, uh, that I put out in my uh, review over the weekend. So things like um, REGN uh, would be a good example, where right now you can see that. It's kind of been going sideways for the last couple of months. And, that, you know, that's a good example where if that kind of closed above that uh, December 8th close of uh, 434.95, that closed above there, you'd then take an entry at the next day's open and your stock could be down at the, um, what is it, Jan 15th close, just around 3.97. You know, so that, that that's the kind of thing I'm looking at. I'm not afraid to have a stock that might be uh, five, ten percent away because of how I position size. It actually doesn't make a difference to me. Something could be the stock can be five percent away, it can be ten percent away. I'm still going to risk half a percent of the portfolio on any one trade. And um, a, another example of that kind of setup, something like. Um, uh, NXPI, NXP semiconductors. That's a that's a good one. I mean, that came very very close to triggering something on Friday. But you can see there that's about to make new highs, and that's a good example where it could give. Um, depending on your time frame, there's two very good areas for a, a stop there. If you're a shorter term, more aggressive player, you could put a stop down at that. Um, Jan 15th close at 76.61 level, which coincides with the 50-day. If you're slightly longer term, you might want to use that um, uh, close down at Jan 6, 72.38. Um, and then another one I've been watching, and I really like this, this um, PANW, 
Palo Alto networks. That's a really nice smooth trend. This is kind of I, I prefer to see things like this. This is um, it's kind of uh, a very efficient trend, if you like. Um, and again, this has kind of been going sideways for a couple of months there. And it, it just gives you very obvious risk reward parameters. It's very easy to see, you, you know, the, and, and that's all I worry about. It, this is to me is what technical analysis is about. It's really just a means to define uh, risk and reward and probability. People get too hung up about um, chart patterns with funny names, <laughs> but all it really is is about managing risk. And uh, that, that's how I use it. And, and this would be a good example of something breaking out to a new high. And on that, you take your entry. You, know, you don't anticipate it. You wait for it to do it. If, you're, if your time frame is long enough, you can afford to wait. And you hold something for as long as I do. You look back at the entry and you realize the entry itself is not that significant. You could have taken the position uh, a week later, a month later. We got so, the chat. Um, we got the chat lighting up here mm -hmm. with some questions on some issues here. We'd like to get your thoughts on them, if possible. Uh, the first one is on mm -hmm. uh, Chipotle Mexican Grill here. Stock uh, rallied back over seven hundred here. Nice rally. Uh, do you have your charts in front of you? Could you, you uh, take a look at uh, CMG and give us a quick technical take? Yeah, I, I've, and I've already got that one because. Um, yeah, that's a. I mean, yes, I like it. I mean, I, I've I've got it. Um, I believe it's in the uh, additional ideas that I put out from my Market Fire subscribers. That's one that we've already um, already got on board. Uh, let me try mm -hmm. to let me pull it up here. Yeah, uh, you know. So right now, uh, see, that's one where. This would scare people, the kind of room I give something like this, but I, I, I'm giving it room down to uh, that Jan 6 close of around 6.64. Whoa, uh, 6.64? You're letting that thing? Wow, what are you What are you looking for, like $900? Or are you in, are you in earlier on this one? Because that's a big stop. No, but, but, that, but it's because, see, but this is what it is. It's just, it, it, I'm only ever risking half a percent. Okay. So, you know, you, you, you size accordingly. It's not that um, it's not that you're risking, you know, that's still only what? That's, it, it, people get uh, scared by the fact it's like, oh, that's $50. But in percentage terms, it's no worse than those other ones I looked at before. Okay. How about Alta, U-L-T-A? We have a question on the chat coming out of that one. Now that one you might have been uh, you might have been uh, very uh, happy if we would have talked to you on this one on Friday because it did have an uptrend, had a consolidation, and broke out on Friday. Would you look to see if this one came back down to those former highs for a potential long entry, or is this uh, the train already left the station on this one? Uh, you see, this this is where for me, I know this is a, this is the point where. Some people would say, "Okay, it's moved, and I'm getting out." This is this is where I'd be getting in. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it like this is a good example. Mm -hmm. I don't have this one. It's been on my watch list for a while, as have many other things. You just can't kiss all the girls. I just can't take all the. Uh, I I wish I could take more positions on, but I run a fairly mm -hmm. concentrated portfolio, and. Um, yeah, this is one I'd be very happy to. I, I certainly wouldn't have a problem getting long here and using a stop down at that uh, previous uh, pivot low down around 127, I guess it is. How about HBI here? Uh, this thing is uh, Haynes Brands. Is that the uh, t shirt and underwear company? Haynes Brands? That thing is uh, running here. Uh, are you waiting to wait till this thing breaks out over 116 and change? 115.77's been the all-time high, or is that yeah? Is yeah, that straight I'd, I'd up move see, I'd want to see it yeah. close above that 11.28 close of um, 115.72. If it closed above there, uh, I, I guess the um, I'd want to see the 20 back above the 50. But I can see a bit of volumes coming into it. It's got earnings. Coming up, I know that that would um, 
worry people taking something that close to earnings. I think it reports later this week. But, um, yeah, that's another good example of something that, you know, it's got some very, very nice long-term trend. It's been consolidating for a while and uh, trying to get that that resumption higher because if you get it, you know, you're – you, you, then you're in, and then you just run the winners. And if it comes back and it's a false breakout, that's okay. You, know, you, you, you take the loss and you move on. You move on to the next one. One more I, for I you. Really, one more for you before we let you go. Uh, just real quickly, Moody's Corporation, MCL, boy, rock of support here at 92. Quite a ways from breaking out, you know. Did you need? Uh, is this too cl- too close to those lows for you to be trying to you know to buy in, on the breakout? Is this more of a? Is this would be more of like, hey, I'm taking a shot at 94 here. If it cuts through 92, I'm out. Yeah, no, I I, I wouldn't be. See, this is one where I wouldn't play. Okay. I mean, it's just um, longer term. That's a really really nice weekly chart. There's no question, but even then, you'd still want it to get back above maybe, I see on the weekly, it probably needs to get above 98. If you go to the daily, where does that put it? Yeah, that, that would make sense. You know, you'd want to see those moving averages cross back over and look like it's Okay. All right, John. I think we got a great idea of what you're looking for at the market. It's John Borman, certified market technician and founder of Alpha Capture. Check out his product on MarketFi. John, thanks for joining us. We'd like to have you on again soon. Great. Thanks a lot.